I'll try to make better I'll try to make better eye contact too. I know I do that even when I'm just talking to someone in a in a normal room, my eyes start to wander, so Welcome everybody once again to Retire.Army, uh, this special edition that we're doing with Justin Murphy recording his 12 months, his last 12 months in the military and his process on retiring and getting out. And today we're going to be going over a few topics uh, such as portraits for, for patriots, talking a little bit about Skillbridge and discussing his journey with Hill Vets, the program that he signed up for is about two weeks in. Welcome back, Justin. Hey, thanks for having me back. So how's things been going over the last couple of weeks? Um, good, making progress. I mean, it, we I kind of look back in retrospect, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, again, it's progress. And so I think as long as you're doing some something, at least incrementally to kind of get you to where you want to be, like you can't really be mad at that. You know, it's not going to be, you're going to make links, leaps and bounds from week to week. But I think as long as, you know, 52 weeks in a year. So if you make a little progress every you know, every week, uh, I think eventually you'll you'll be a lot better for it in the end. Yeah, it's all about that incremental progress and the baby steps, basically. Um, anything that stuck out in your mind over the last two weeks that was specific that you might want to talk about real quick? I mean, my head's kind of all over the place, right? So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of just like lingering in my head. You know, eventually, like, what is this? What is this? Whole, you know, what's the culminate? You know, the the final product gonna look like at the end, right? Like what? Where am I going to be, you know, financially, you know, you know, what am I going to have for employment? Um, you know, just kind of like, where am I, you know, what's the final outcome going to look like? And is it going to be something that I'm going to, I don't know, kind of enjoy or embrace really? Or am I going to be like, oh man, this is terrible. What did I do? I, you know, I, I think that's, you know, probably being a little over overly pessimistic thinking you know a terrible outcome but you know just thinking like that just in general so just like i said my head's kind of all over the place but again i'm just kind of you know pushing day by day just to to at least make progress at least in one of those like different areas so i kind of just think like i'm like i'm kind of like an octopus like i got eight arms out there so at least if one of them one of the eight is doing something that it should i you know i can't be mad at that even if the other you know seven may be stagnant for a week or so so yeah, yeah, that's really that's really where I'm at right now. Cool. Um, let's talk about headshots real quick. So I know you got headshots done and they came back. Um, it was from Portraits for Patriots. I guess one of the founders or co-founders, Eric Stigall, actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. So I'm connected now. So maybe we can bring him on the show uh, sometime. We'll see how that goes. But how was the process of getting that done? Uh, first, actually, how how you found it? I think we talked about that last show, but let's just recap real quick and then how the process was and then what the outcome was and were you happy with it? Was it, did it meet your expectations? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I don't know, remember how I, you know, came across it. I know, you know, I just know kind of in general, probably just, you know, from social media or talking to people like there's programs out there, to, you know, that, you know, that are designed to help transitioning veterans for everything, you know, students and photos. And so I knew, I, I knew there had to be at least one or two programs out there. So I kind of did a Google search, right? I was like, okay, headshots, veterans, something like that. And it popped up. I was like, oh, cool. So I like went through the website, just read what they're about. Initially, I think the first time I went, I saw they were in Colorado. I was like, oh man, like that's not going to work. But then I went back and I reread it and it's like, no, they're based in Colorado, but they have, you know, photographers all over the country that um, you know, support the program. So it's like, you know, it's a pretty simple application, just like you would anything online. You go in there, kind of type in your data, you know, your name, your location, kind of what your expectations are. You know, it's probably like five or six points. You hit submit and they're like, okay, we'll be in contact. And then I went a couple of days. I got, a, you know, an email from someone with the program and they kind of laid out some options. Because I think within like the local kind of comedian area, there was maybe like three or four um but the one that was like right close to me it's, it was in alexandria and you can imagine with the big military community in this area like they he was the most backlogged um so it was like that that one was like three he said like three or four months uh wait and i was like ah eh, you know i could do that he's like or you could go up to you know to another one so the, the one that i'm going through was um this guy uh what's his name um hold on i wrote it down uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Barrow photography. Um, 
so uh, I ended up contact or they contacted him for me. And he actually, he's actually, uh, I don't know what the MLS is called, but he's like an actual like army photographer. Like that's his job. Um, but like on the side, he has like his, you know, private f photography company. And he actually just has kind of a little makeshift studio out of his garage um, on post housing on Fort Meade. So I drove up there on a Saturday morning, uh, you know, t about an hour or so. Went up there, you know, had a little 15 minute appointment, got ready, you know, took some headshots in his garage, had a nice little delightful conversation with him. And probably about a week later, uh, he had him back to me. So we took maybe maybe like eight to 10 photos, actually, you know, different positions, different backgrounds. Um, so he sent them to me. Um, so there were, you know, there were, it was absolutely free. Um, his rate was if you wanted, you know, if you wanted him to spend some time to go in and touch him up, you know, get rid of your flyaways, kind of, you know, lighten your beard, maybe get some of your wrinkles. He said he'd spend about an hour for photo and he charged like 30 bucks, which is like an absolute steal. Um, cause I had talked to some professionals maybe over last summer, last fall, and, you know, it was going to be exponentially more to go in for a studio session and all that. So, you know, $30 and, you know, yeah, a couple hours of my time. I, I feel like that's a deal you can't really pass up. And I was, you know, I was more than happy with the results. Um, so, you know, I opted to pay an extra 30 bucks because, you know, I had flyaways, got some wrinkles. <laughs> so it made me look better than I really was. But no, I was more than happy with it. So, so yeah, it was a great experience. I, I would definitely recommend it to anybody. Why why was why is the headshot shot so important? I mean, I know it's important for business and for doing, you know, interviews like setting up interviews and having your profile set up and things like that but what what is it what's important about it to you so there's a couple things first right is i, I kind of want to uh kind of definitively I don't, I don't know how i would say this in words but you know kind of separate you know the military justin from what's going to eventually be the civilian justin right and i think the first step is actually kind of self-identifying that you're now you're, you know you're heading in that direction. So you want to be a civilian. So you want to have a, a nice, you know, civilian looking headshot that really doesn't have any affiliation uh, with the military. So that was one of the things. And the other thing, I think it's just a good, you know, it's almost like a, like a first impression when you meet somebody, right? You just want like a nice professional um, look, you know, it kind of adds just like a layer of credibility, right? So the same reason you probably wouldn't go to like a meeting like like rolling out of bed, your hair is a mess, you know, wrinkled clothes and anything. You like you want to have like a professional appearance to build credibility and let people know that you're serious. So I think that's kind of uh, why it was important to me. You know, just a, a box to check. You know that a um I'm really kind of moving towards that civilian lifestyle, and then b just you know present a, a professional a uh, professional appearance. So that's 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 really that was my motivation. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, I mean, the, the, the path that you're kind of going down towards like hill vets, uh, which we can just talk about in a second, but it seems like a natural thing to have that kind of um, headshot in your portfolio, in your total package, so that when you go and do things like hill vets or go meet with people in Congress or meet on Capitol Hill or whatever, that's probably definitely the, one of the first things they'll see, right? It's, they'll go to your LinkedIn profile and they'll see that headshot. And they'll be like, okay, cool. This guy's He's a professional. So let's, let's just dig into the Hill Vets thing. You've been doing it for a couple of weeks. Um, you found that online as well. Um, how's that first couple of weeks going with them and what, what are some key takeaways that you got from it? No, it's good. Uh, so uh, we had our first meeting at the end of January. Um, <clears throat> then last, so we do Tuesday nights. So the commitment is uh, Tuesday nights from 6 p.m. to 8.30. Um, for like the main group. And after this next week, we meet Tuesday, we're going to get broken up into what they call fire teams. So it's just like a kind of a smaller group. So they're kind of breaking the master group into about, I think about six kind of subtopics that we're supposed to basically kind of work on throughout the course. And then the culmination or the, yeah, like kind of the end result of the, uh, of the program is you kind of host a symposium and you go over these, these topics that you've kind of spent, you know, the greater point uh, or the greater part of the, the program kind of researching and, and diving into um so yeah so that's the commitment so uh went the first you know the first week um in january last tuesday we did a virtual because it was the night of the um, state of the union so just trying to you know prevent people from having to like sit through traffic and you know i'm sure dc is a is a, a nightmare that night so we just did a virtual so yeah, the next in person will be this Tuesday, but no, I mean it's been great. I've yeah, I've met uh, a lot of interesting people. There's 
I think there's 18 of us in total. But no, kind of developing some relationships. We they do they also host uh, once a month. They do like a social night just for you know everyone that's you know affiliated with the program, alumni. You know they they pick a spot in D.C. I think it's the first Thursday of the month. So I went to that in February and got to meet a lot of people and ask questions. And no, it's just it's a great community of you know. So we've got some people on active duty. We've got some people that have you know. Uh, that of ETS and they're, you know, they're, they're working on other endeavors and we've got, you know, some spouses and we've also got some people that work for some, you know, various VSOs and nonprofits. So no, it's a great, it's a great community of people. Um, I'm really excited to move forward um, with it. So yeah, I can't wait to get back Tuesday night. I'm not, I'm not a big, after two years of a pandemic, I'm not the biggest fan of virtual meetings anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people say that as well. Um, do you think it's applicable for just people who are trying to get like public public uh, affairs jobs or public interaction jobs or work with people in like say Capitol Hill or in the Senate or the House or whatever? Or would it be would it reach a broader audience beyond that? Like, is there something that somebody else from another type of work would benefit from it? Um, I mean, I, I don't think it could hurt at all. Uh, really, because I think you're just, you know, it's all about kind of expanding your perspective, I think, right? And so that's really, you just kind of want a dive, the, the more diverse of an audience you can have, I think, the better. I mean, even if you just want information on like how things work. So I mean, a couple of people in our group actually already work on the Hill um, right now. So, you know, it's nice just to get just an inside scoop on like the processes and the personalities and, and how things actually run. So no, I think it's, you know, it's good for people that I think want to head that way as a career or people that are just inquisitive and just want some more information and, you know, just kind of want to give, gain a better understanding. So, um, yeah, I think I think it I don't, I don't think it's never I don't think it's ever not beneficial to kind of try to expand on your, your knowledge base. And then with that, um, the Skillbridge program that you're actually trying to uh, apply for, what kind of program is that and where is that going to leave you after that? So really what I want to do um, is just kind of get, a, you know, a, a legislative fellowship, either in an individual office or on a, on a committee somewhere, really. And so my goal is to kind of just start that um, kind of after uh, summer break, really. So think kind of like post Labor Day, really. Um, so technically, I think because of SkillBridge, like you can only start it within your last 180 days. So you have to like actually take your retirement day, backtrack 180 days. But I think it takes me to, like early October. Because my plan is to just, you know, I haven't used any leave this year. So my plan is probably, just, I'll probably end up taking the entire month of September and just burning leave because I really don't have anything um, planned. So that's really kind of my plan is September until, you know, whenever, until I get a job, <laughs> I'll just be doing, you know, a fellowship just to kind of, you know, gain experience. Because really right now I don't have anything. I've got institutional experience on, you know, uh, uh, you know, public policy and public administration, but I don't really have any practical hands-on experience. So that's really what I'm trying to gain and kind of use that skill bridge for just to kind of make me more marketable and then be, you know, just to kind of confirm that's kind of the direction I want to head into after, after I retire. The end goal, like, do you have any idea of any jobs that you're lining up or potentially lining up? Or are you going to use those, those kind of like mentorship programs, skill bridge to try to like lead you down the path to, to where you want to be at? Yeah. So, I mean, there's always a chance, right? You get in there and you're like, man, this is nothing like what I expected. I hate this. Like, never mind. This was a smith mistake, like abort mission. Let me move on to something else. There's always that chance. I mean, I hope that's not it. Um, um, but yeah, really, I just, so kind of, it's almost like a, what would you call it? Like a two-way kind of, not interview, but, you know, kind of filling each other out, right? So, you know, wherever I'm working, they're kind of filling me out at the same time, I'm kind of filling them out to see if that's, you know, even the career path I want to go. Uh, so that's kind of my plan. Eventually, probably, I'd want to look at doing something, you know, like a legislative aid, leg legislative, uh, legislative assistant, something like that. But really, kind of the world's my oyster, right? Just, just whatever, whatever kind of appeals to me and kind of, I, I think, compl complements my skill set, I would be, you know, be welcome to. What was the other thing that you had mentioned before we started talking? Oh, yeah. So, no, another great resource that I had found. So I actually found this through my wife because she had actually taken part of it. But um, so I actually applied for a mentor um, through uh, American Corporate Partners. So, you know, it's another entity 
You know, it offers another, you know, another resource for transitioning service members um, to kind of try and the, try to uh, assign them with uh, mentors who, you know, are kind of in the the career realm of, you know, where the service member some service members want to go. So again, it was another, you know, online application. Um, so went in, you know, it was a little more comprehensive uh, than, you know, the the Portrait for Patriots website, but you know, it was probably about 20 questions. Um, you fill in the application. And then I ended up scheduling an interview with the operations manager for the program about a week, week and a half later. Or so pretty quick conversation, about 20 minutes, just kind of laying out my goals and the kind of the fields of of uh, of study um, that I was kind of looking forward to. And they said they, you know, they looked through kind of their data bank to try to find someone that kind of you know, kind of meets that criteria and they would kind of get back to me. So I haven't heard yet. Um, I just had my meeting and I think, I think it was Monday. So it hasn't even quite been a week yet. So hopefully within the next three weeks or so, I'll have, I'll have a mentor uh, lined up that I can talk to. Um, but like I said, I had found out through it from my wife. So she had actually got referred to that program, I think through High Inner Heroes. So after we moved back from Italy um, in 2020, she had actually found the program um, and got linked up with a couple of different mentors and you know, she's loved the results. So she definitely told me it was something I should look into. So I figured why not? And is that on a, like a set schedule basis, like maybe one year or six months or whatever, or is that just, yeah, so yeah. So the expectation is one year and they, and, uh, when I had my meeting, uh, I was told about, you know, meeting once a month is, is, you know, pretty realistic expectation. Um, you know, until you can kind of build a more fluid relationship. But yeah, about one year and then you meet, you know, once a month with your mentor is kind of the, the outline of the plan. And that's in person or is that, that all uh, virtual? You know, I don't know. I think that's, I mean, they're kind of hands off when it comes to that. They said it could be either or. Obviously, it depends on geography, like where each of you are located. But, you know, there's no rules, right? Like if you live in the same area, you can definitely meet up. I think it's really their design is just to connect the people. And once they connect you, I think... You know, they're kind of hands off unless there's an issue or something like that. So I think they just kind of try to let things kind of form organically at that point. And so what's the next couple of weeks look like? What do you got lined up on the agenda? So one thing that's always kind of in the back of my head I'm working on. So I'm working on my uh, my PMP certification. So project management professional through PMI. Um, so this is something I've wanted to do for, a, you know, a long time several years, even when I was in ILE, you know, the schoolhouse, they were pushing it. And I was like, okay, something I'll do eventually, right? Like, I've got the experience, I've seen it kind of validate it with a credential. So, but, um, so I've been working through that. Uh, it's, you know, the, the actual, uh, like, blocks of instruction are a minimum of 35 hours. So that's, like, quite a lot of time. And I'm doing it all virtually, so it's kind of self-paced. So I've been knocking out the lessons when I can. Uh, like I said before, I'm not the biggest fan of virtual really anything, especially education. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, sometimes it gets a little mundane. So, but, you know, when I can sit down for like an hour, you know, an hour or two or try to knock out some modules. So I'm making progress on that. I think I'm probably about 25% through with that. So try to keep plugging it that away or, yeah, working on that, you know, so eventually I can get through the block of instruction. I can apply to actually test out for it. So working on that. and then. Other things I'm working on is just kind of uh, trying to develop kind of um, some personal business I got to just kind of supplement my income. So I finally have a, a business set up to do some government contracting, just kind of reselling for, you know, procurement of goods, services, things like that. So I've actually got to bid on a couple of contracts the last couple of weeks. Haven't won anything, but, you know, <laughs> I'm starting that out. And also just trying to figure out another way to kind of scale our rental properties, you know, to just kind of serve as another stream of income. So just doing a lot of re research into that because, I mean, really, I didn't really know what I was doing at all. But, you know, I was able to set up the businesses, establish the LLC, set up some business accounts, got registered on Sam.gov, which was a nightmare. That took about a month. But, you know, I made it through the other side and I'm, a, you know, officially recognized small business by, you know, pretty much every government entity that you need to recognize your business. So just working on that, you know, um, just for, you know, in the in the very likely uh, scenario where, you know, my salary is going to be less than I make now, right? I can kind of supplement that with additional streams of income. So pension, disability, you know, rental properties, and hopefully government contracting will kind of make me 
whole, at least whole, if not, you know, better off than I, than I am now. So that's really what I'm working on. Um, just kind of thinking long term, like a year from now, uh, where will I be? So, yeah, the project management uh, certification is pretty, pretty in depth, pretty critical, and it's also you have to have a lot of background information as well. Like you have to show that you've done like X amount of projects, X amount of hours work on a project, and that Pimbok book is like no joke. So yeah, so I actually uh, I re actually reached out to one of my colleagues who had posted. This was probably back in September. Um, he had posted like, you know, I got it, you know, he reached above target, um, on, you know, all three of the criteria. So I reached out, I was like, okay, man, like, what did you do to do this? Like, give me the, the, the down low. And he had like, you know, developed exactly what he did, um, to get there. So I'm just, I'm just kind of following his guidance and getting through. And so I actually found like a pretty good, pretty cheap, um, program on Udemy. It was like 30 bucks. It's by, it's by, um, what is his name? Andrew Remendal, Remdel, I can't remember. But he's pretty big. I mean, he's a he's a pretty big uh he's a pretty big name out there, I guess, and you know, PMI. He's got a hundred plus certifications. So he's a really good educator. Um, you know, I like his content. It's online. It was only thirty dollars and it meets that, you know, that third it's, his course is actually like thirty nine hours, so it meets the thirty five hour uh you know course mandate so i'm just plugging away through that and uh yeah and it's not always the most interesting material but you know just just trying to plug away for the so i can reach the end result yeah yeah i remember we did in uh i think it was in the basic course the advanced course yeah we did the advanced course and we actually used the book as a reference but we did a project plus instead which is a comptia certification which is a subset of pmp but basically the same kind of principles uses the same reference materials and, and all kinds of guidelines. So that might be like an additional thing that you could do because it's only a week long. You could do like a week long boot camp and then just knock out the certification for that as well. well yeah. It seems like PMP is a pretty, it's a difficult one because it's just, it, yeah, you said the block of instruction like is a long time. Like, yeah, no, technically you could do it in two days, right? If you don't want to sleep, but like 30, 35 hours of like direct interaction, like that's a lot. So, but you know, yeah, there's some some easier uh, certifications I'm looking after that, like Agile or just Scrum Master. I mean, you could knock that out in you know far less time. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think the big one is like get over the PMP hump, and then I can you know work on other things to kind of supplement that later down later down the road. So cool. That's all I got for today. Um, anything else you got? No, no, I think we covered a lot. So I'm happy with it. Sounds good. All right. Well, until next time, we'll catch back up with you in a couple of weeks and I'll write down a bunch of these things in the show notes. I'm going to get a copy of your headshot so that we can update the, the thumbnail uh, and make it all nice and pretty. And um, yeah. Yeah. Until next time, everybody have a safe one. Uh, check in the show notes and also check the timestamps so that you can jump around the video. This was a, not a two hour video like the normal ones, but you can still jump around to topics as you need. And until then, have a good, safe week and talk to you later. All right. Sounds good. Have a good week.